Hi there, welcome to Tide TV. My name is Tide, and today we're going to be going over the past announcement of World of Warcraft Legion. Now, this is a new expansion that Blizzard just announced this past Thursday, and we're going to go ahead and take a look at some of the major features and highlight some of the most important things that are going to be coming out of this expansion. Let's go ahead and take a look. I'm not a huge lore junkie, but from what I got from this trailer, it looks like Gul'dan is freeing Illidan and bringing forth the biggest and the most massive Legion attack onto Azeroth. So what we have to do is we need to go to the Broken Isles, which is where this expansion takes place. It's a new continent, sort of reminiscent of Northern, if, if you ask me. We need to go there and find these pillars to bring a Titan, I want to say, to help us defeat or at least push back the Legion. And honestly, numbers really don't matter here. The Legion is never ending. They don't die. So we need power and skill. Aside from that, I think we're going around opening up these light pillars and on our way we are meeting up with some of Azjara's forces which is kind of neat. I would love to see us fight against more Naga and get a little bit more of insight of what the Naga are. We are also going to be going into the Emerald Dream and stopping the Emerald Nightmare from corrupting Azeroth. That should be fun. That's definitely something people have wanted to see for a long time. I really do want to see what the Emerald Dream looks like. After we find these pillars we're going to use them to summon the Titan and stop the Legion from coming through to Azeroth, thus saving the world. So the next huge announcement was a new class. This is the Demon Hunter. This is the class that Illidan essentially is. He trained a whole bunch of elite Demon Hunters and sent them away on a mission right before we had killed him in Black Temple. Now all these Demon Hunters I think were locked away in a jail and I think we start our adventure as a Demon Hunter in the jail itself freeing ourselves. The Demon Hunter class is only available, available, available to, I can't even words, to Night Elf and Blood Elves. They have special character customization options like their horns, the blindfold they wear, and their tattoos. Also, I think their skin can be affected. They only use a specific weapon that's designed for them only called Glaives. And now these Glaives are only available to Demon Hunters and only they can use them. They only have two specs, Havoc and Vengeance, one being a melee damage dealer and the other being a tank. They are supposed to have unrivaled mobility, meaning uh, they can move faster and more fluidly than any of the other classes. And they also have a double jump. They can vault in and out of combat. They can also use their wings to glide around and use them for aerial attacks. They have the ability to metamorphosize themselves into their full demon form, allowing them to bring out all of their potential and teleport in and out of combat. Their available weapons so far are daggers, fist weapons, one-handed axes, one-handed maces, and one-handed swords, however glaives are unique to them. They are a hero class, which means that they do not start at level 1, they start at theorized anywhere near 90 to 100. The next big announcement was artifact weapons. Artifact weapons are essentially weapons of fallen heroes and or heroes that have given up hope, and feature weapons like Ashbringer and Doomhammer, um, and so forth. Now these weapons are unique to the spec per class, so there's 36 of them, and they level up with us through our journey in the Broken Isles. Now they had their own look talent tree looking things. Apparently we get them all by level 100, but as we, I mean 110, I'm sorry, but as we level up, we unlock more, and eventually unlock them all. So we can customize these weapons, and each weapon has a bunch of different designs, different color schemes, and about four to five-ish different looking versions of the weapon. Remember that these these weapons are unique to spec and also hint at a couple things. For example, the Survival Hunter has a spear and it has been confirmed that Survival Hunters are now melee, which is pretty awesome. Very different. Also, Fire Mages get what looks like a sword and it's been theorized that maybe we might be seeing a melee fire spec on mages, which would be kind of different. Maybe not full melee, but some form of melee. They can be transmogged, which is a very, very important thing. Just in case you don't like the way yours looks, we can always mog them over and make them look however we want. Druids also get some really neat new forms. Take a look at this picture right here. These are the new druid forms, um, at least two of them that were showcased, and they look fantastic. I feel artifact weapons are going to be a pretty cool new feature. However, it should be noted that there's no weapon drops in Legion and we will not be seeing any weapon drops, only upgrades to our current artifact weapons, which can be dropped off bosses and at the end of dungeons. So we are going to be seeing a lot of upgrades to these weapons and hopefully 
they turn out to be really cool. I'm pretty excited for them. A new feature that they didn't elaborate too much on, but we did see a nice couple slides about it, are the new class order halls. Now these class order halls are kind of like little clubs for your class. They are different per class, so for example, the paladins are going to get an enclave underneath the Lighthopes Chapel. Um, the Death Knights might continue to use Arcarus, or maybe they'll get a nicer upgraded version of it. The shamans seem to be in a cave over the maelstrom. Now what these allow us to do is customize our artifact weapons, uh, send out our champions, which are kind of like followers, except there's very few of them, and it looks like what they do is they run their mission like you would normally have your followers do, and they chain a quest. So if you send your your follower to go investigate, I don't know, cave, and they come back and you're like, well, Paul, you should look at this cave because this cave is pretty cool. Then you're going to be like, all right, let me go take a look. And you go in there and there's like an enemy, and, you know, you kick ass and you get the loot. But it's different from what we've seen before with the followers just coming back off their really cool missions and just like, oh, look, got you some gold. Here you go, bro. And it's eh, not that cool. But this does seem like it's going to have more meaning. Also, it looks like we're going to get some class quests, and from what they've told us about the artifact weapons, we're getting class specific, I mean, I'm sorry, spec specific quests to go on and upgrade our, our weapons. So the dungeon and raids this time around are going to be a little bit more than what we got in Warlords. We're getting nine starting dungeons. One of the presenters, I can't remember his name off the top of my head, made a comment that he wanted to see dungeons done better this time and that he felt like he did a disservice to dungeons and warlords i completely agree dungeons and warlords were absolutely useless but then again they weren't that useful in mop either aside from gathering justice and valor points now he said he was going to add some form of replayability to all dungeons that way we can go back do them and do them again over and over and get something that's more beneficial we're going to be seeing two raids coming to the launch that being the emerald nightmare where we go into the emerald dream that's twisted and corrupted and we're going to be seeing seven bosses in there in the second raid is going to be suramar palace which is going to have 10 bosses and finally killing gul'dan hopefully killing gul'dan but it says we're definitely going to fight him so we're going to see something interesting and this whole city looks like it's going to be very elegant very beautiful so we're not going to be seeing this iron horde spike theme death fiery slag spikes Thing. we're going to be seeing some really nice elven architecture. So the last feature we're going to be talking about is a new PvP honor system. Now this system hasn't been very elaborated yet, however we did get some interesting information on it. Now the way it's going to work is there going to be, there's going to be honor ranks from 1 to 50, and as you progress you earn points and bonuses and talents. Now this is interesting because the PvP has its own, PvPers now have their own talent tree. And we can go down this tree however we want. It looks just like our current talent trees. However, it only takes effect when we enter PvP. I want to say it only actually takes effect when we enter Battlegrounds. But I think they're still working that out. It's been said we're not going to see any PvP gear. But that is still up in the air. It wasn't confirmed. However, he did say he wasn't sure about PvP gear. Now, some of the new abilities that are coming are going to take place... Of things like every man for himself we're getting basically our trinket is going to be part of the talent tree so our first pick can immediately be the trinket and we don't have to worry about that anymore as well as being able to keep our trinket slots now prestige kind of like the way it works in call of duty is going to be the same way as it's going to work now in wow once we reach the level 50 of our honor rank we can prestige go back to one and start up again while keeping a prestige level now your portrait itself changes depending on your prestige so when you click on somebody or you're going to attack somebody, you can see how experienced this PvP player is. When, I'm also not sure if it's going to be account bound or character bound, although I'm almost positive it's going to be character bound. But our portraits and badges are going to also unlock unique mounts and unique PvP artifact variants. So we're going to see some variants for our artifacts, that way we can use them for PvP only and not exactly look the same as all the raiders. And that's all the information I've been able to procure off of the new World of Warcraft Legion expansion. I am super stoked and I cannot wait for it to come out, but I'm also going to be a little sketchy since Warlords didn't go so well. So I would love to hear what you guys think. Go ahead and leave a comment below. Go ahead and like, subscribe, you know, all that good stuff. But until then, this has been Tide and I will see you guys next time. Later.